Hey, girl. Hey. What's going on? What's up? Whoa. <laughs> there we go. How are you? It's weird watching you on Helwani then coming over to see me. <laughs> yeah, you're the only other one I'm doing. <laughs> oh, all right. Wow. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Seemed like a good time. So, uh, yeah. yeah. The new management knows I hate doing, I don't like doing media. So it's only certain people that I'll talk to. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, yeah. I mean, we're, uh, it can be crazy sometimes. So, and what is it? Media day today? Do you have to do that? Yeah. Yeah. I got to go over there. Okay. Get one. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> keep it as limited as you can so i get that yeah but uh it's funny jesse uh you've been you've been liking making comments in my hair the last couple of times we've chatted so uh this time i get to <laughs> see you did something you and, get to talk about mine? <laughs> yeah i mean i saw the explanation which seems pretty obvious to me for those who do know who harley quinn is ariel come on but uh it's cotton candy business what's what it is to me <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah I mean, I kind of, I've, you know what I've been saying for a while. I really miss having colorful hair. I think, uh, I think after this, I might keep the pink for a while. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, you ha used to have it for the, uh, not the mohawk, but kind of something like that, right? Mohawk was black. Mohawk was black, but I had uh, when I first started dyeing my hair, it was like this color, this pinky color. Mm -hmm. But I've been, I've been an array of different colors. But yeah, I definitely miss the pink. It's been a rainbow on your head <laughs> since over been. the years. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, well, it does look good. I just had to poke some fun at you for uh, giving me some shit the last couple of times. So. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, to be fair, when I the very first time we started sending each other weird like stalker photos, right. and I think it was a Bellator event, you had short hair then. Yes, I did. And now yeah. it's like getting longer and longer. But I, I think I also had short hair then too. <laughs> Shorter, yeah. I think it was like here. Yeah. Yeah. And we're waiting for so long. You're like, I just want long hair again. <laughs> yeah, for real. I'm like, I need that stroke of photo to make my hair look luscious. <laughs> right. So, now, here we are. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And so we saw each other at the, um, what was that, the MA Awards too. And I bring yep. this up because it was funny. Uh, you were the first, what do they call them? Introducers or whatever for the, uh, one of the awards, the one that Brandon Moreno won. And the very first one. Yeah. And his, what the guy... <laughs> dog face or whatever <laughs> screwed up the announcement <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah that was my fault though that was my fault though and he was so mad at me because <laughs> they had they fucking i feel like i feel like we fucked up early so that the rest of the show would run super smooth right because right. They didn't quite give us the right, like enough instruction, and then so when we were like, and the nominees are, and then nothing happened, <laughs> like they didn't because they're supposed to play the video showing all the nominees. Yeah. And we were like, oh, maybe we're supposed to say it, you know? And I was like, oh, aren't you supposed to say it? And he was like, okay. <laughs> as he showed it then the nominees played and he was he didn't talk to me for the rest of the night he was so mad at me he was so embarrassed and i was like this is funny i said people are gonna remember this like who cares you're literally like you're literally famous more famous than me because of a fucking funny viral video right, right? so this is yeah this lighten is up hilarious. dude <laughs> yeah who cares it's the mma like who cares people yeah. fuck up at the oscars like we can fuck up at the mma awards and I mean, if we're going to be honest, it's not like that many people watch that show, <laughs> the MMA Awards show. No. So. no, like it was just the people that were there. Right. And I'm like, I don't care what, I don't care what anyone thinks of me. So <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, that was hilarious though. And uh, yeah, he needs to lighten up, man. Settle the ego. <laughs> but... Yeah, for real. For real. Sorry, dog face. Yeah. But who cares? Yeah. That was a fun event, though. I hadn't been to one of those before, so that was cool. You know, oh, was, really? Yeah. That's the second time I've presented there at, at the MMA Awards. The last time, I think, was three years ago. I think it was after I fought Paige, um, so 2018. Mm -hmm. And they had it at the, uh, at the theater at the Palm. So it was it was big. It was like a big event, yeah. you know, a lot, way more people. This one was really nice, but I think the more, like, intimate setting – is a little more intimidating to speak right. in front of you know, because you literally at the palms one you were up on a stage mm -hmm. and with the lights and everything you couldn't really see anything past like the third row this one the the one at this other place it was it was nice though it was nice but yeah. i like I, I got a little nervous before walking out because i'm like 
fuck all these people that I hate are here. I don't hate <laughs> everyone, but there were there were definitely people that I don't that I'm not fond of. I prefer not to see if I can avoid them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's just how it goes sometimes, though, right? So it was good, though. I yeah, it was, it was cool, though. It was, yeah. And I got to, I took one of my best friends, Stephanie. She's not in MMA at all. Um, but I got to introduce her to like a lot of people that she's seen on TV. And it was, that kind of made it more special, you know, because I love, like, like when I take Amber places, it's cool because mm-hmm. she, she's in the industry. So she's already met a lot of like famous fighters and stuff like that. Um, but, I still get a little kick out of out of introducing her to her to fighters that she really likes that she hasn't met. But when I took Stephanie and she was like around, you know, musicians and and fucking people like Dogface right. and then famous fighters, like she was, she was a little bit, uh, she was she was more excited, and that 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 made the whole night really special for me because I also got to introduce her from Five Figure Death Punch because she's a big fan of Five Figure Death Punch. I was just so going to mention kinda, that because like, so that, am that I. Made, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that made my whole week did you get to meet him no i was very pissed off he was coming down the red carpet and then like just dodged the media because he probably didn't think anyone wanted to talk to him but i was most yeah. excited to talk to him probably you and you of course but <laughs> he's such a he's such a nice man you should have yelled out next time just just yell out to him and say hey chris can i talk to you he he literally like I've been to a couple of like, cause he's one of my, he's one of my pretty good friends, mm-hmm. friends, you know, um, he's also sober. So he and I really connected over, over sobriety. Mm-hmm. And, um, we've been to a couple of events and not, not together, but we've been at the same couple of events, you know, and he really more than a lot of fighters that I know, he loves meeting people. Like he, he's a, you're making he's this worse. <laughs> he's a talker. He will never stop talking. Like you literally have to tell him to shut up because he will never stop talking. So next time you see him, tell right. him that you're friends with me too. Say, hey, I'm friends with Jesse Jess. She told me to come up and talk to you. I'm also a huge fan and I just want to lick your face. Yes. And if you want to lick his face, he would probably let you. All right. There we go. I will do it then. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been following Death Punch since their first album. Like, they helped me get through high school and middle school. And I know he wasn't in the band at that time, but uh, I'm diehard. So uh, <laughs> that was very oh, disappointing awesome. for me. But I still might oh. just message him for like something like this because i would love to do that you know so. do it i'll take i'll text him as soon as i get off the phone with you and i'll all say right. i'll say hey drake Griggs is a really good friend of mine he wants to do an interview with you all right, you're he making be- dreams come true jesse <laughs> 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 that's what we do here but uh as for other things you know um did you move back in the trailer because i see you know in your instagram stories i can't quite tell it looks a little trailer is it just maybe dark when you're doing the stories but, it uh, is. <laughs> yeah Wait, what'd you say? It just broke up. Oh, sorry. I was saying the trailer life. Have you gone back to the trailer life? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I just handed in. I handed back my keys to my apartment on Monday, right before I left. Oh, Vegas. all right. It was such a good feeling. I like my apartment was nice. It, I had a really nice apartment. It was in a good area. Like it was cool having that stability for a minute, but it just isn't, it just isn't me. Not you the know? same. No. And you know what? Like it's, it's taken a long time for for like Amber and Coach Kieran to understand me. Cause I think um, I actually listened to Coach Kieran do an interview with the UFC about me a, a couple of weeks back. And they were asking him cause they, they did a, they were doing a piece on me about me living in the trailer. And um, they asked him, they're like, oh, how do you feel about her moving back into the trailer? And he was like, he was like, you know, at first when she told me, um, he's like, I thought it was her way of like trying to get out of here. You know, like trying to get out of California. He's like, you know, she's left a lot of. Which is all very valid. He's like, but I've realized that that's. He's like, I've realized I needed to put my ego and like my wants and desires aside and and realize that that just the ability to pick up and leave whenever she wants brings Jesse a lot of peace. He's like, and it doesn't mean that she's going to. She just needs to know that if she ever needed to, she could. And he's like, and he's like, I realize that that makes her committing to me in this gym even more special because she doesn't have to stay here. Mm-hmm. Like she's not locked into a lease. She's not locked into anything. She has the ability. To- <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And like. When I told him I wanted to go back into a trailer, I was like, coach, I'm committed to too many things right now. I said, I'm committed to my career. I'm committed to this gym and I'm committed to you. I said, I cannot be committed to Elise as well. Like, I can't, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> That's incredible. So uh, with the peace in mind, I imagine you won't be getting dying light too. <laughs> uh,
Instagram. You cut out there. Sorry. <laughs> Do you know Emma May, Emma May Tristan on Instagram? He like always. Not him personally. And his wife go to, but you know who he is, right? Yes, I think so. Yeah. So he, uh, he lives not far from the gym. Him and his wife come in and bring their baby to come and see us all the time. And he actually uh, last week dropped off a portable gaming case that has a TV and everything in it for me. He's like, I just had this. I'm not using it. <laughs> Do you want it? So I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I want it. I don't even have a TV in my trailer. So I'm going to try to hook, I'm gonna try to hook that up because um, I'm fuck mate. I want to play Dying Light 2 so bad. So I'm going to try to hook that up. And if I can't get it to work properly, then I'm just going to buy like a drop down screen and a projector and do it, try to do it that way. That'd be cool. I mean, you know, in the trade, like the whole atmosphere, that sounds potentially terrifying, which I know is maybe half the excitement for you, but like. <laughs> Imagine having yeah. a big drop down screen and then, the, and then the zombies are like fucking four <laughs> foot away from your face. Like that sounds tight. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to go. I can play outside. Like I can put the screen outside, go sit out in my, in my little outdoor setting and play out there. That's some immersion right there. You're making it too realistic. <laughs> I'm super excited. I'm super excited. Yeah, I know. I'm excited for that game too. But uh, not sure when I'll get it, but we'll get around to it because the first one was quite good. Is it released yet? Yeah, it, they it came delayed out it a couple of times. on Friday, I think, last week. But it's out now. Oh, yeah. Oh, tight. Yeah, because it was supposed to be released in like October last year. Yeah. And then they kept delaying. Yeah. Yeah, a bunch of game delays these days. So... Yeah. Well, hopefully that means that it's because they were making it better. Right. That's hopefully what you want. Out of yeah. it, so. yeah. uh, and I wanted to mention this, Jesse, because I thought it was hilarious and I reacted to it on Instagram. But I'm going to direct quote you from uh, your 10 year ago memory on Facebook, because I got to know the story behind this. If you were just being silly, Jesse, or uh, this was a true story when you said, just saw my first naked man in months. Pity he was fat, hairy, and on the train. What is the story behind this? <laughs> <laughs> so 10 years ago, what was that? 2012. So I was living in Sydney and I used to have to catch a train for, because they have a, they have a really good public transport system in Sydney, like similar to New York with the trains, okay. right? Yeah. Um, and I used to have to catch, I used to spend about two hours a day on the train there. So I'm assuming, I don't remember the exact story, but I'm assuming that on one of the, because because this was also when I used to drink a lot. So I would work, I worked at like one of those little phone repair places that were in the middle of malls, right? Okay. Where you'd like try to sell phone cases, yeah. but then you could also repair their phones. And so I used to work at one of those in the city and then I would have to catch an, an hour train home at night. And so we would finish work at like nine o'clock and then my boss and I at 9 p.m. And then my boss and I would go to this bar, this like student bar that would sell pints of cider for two bucks. So then we would go and drink these pints of cider and get like fucked up, like <laughs> proper fucked up. And then I would have to catch a train for an hour home by myself. So I'm assuming at one of these 1 a.m. fucking train rides home, <laughs> I probably saw a naked fat man. Which I, I actually, which funnily enough, funnily enough, like hairy, hairy, chubby dudes is like, that's my, that's my taste. That's what I like. You know, so I don't know why I was complaining about it on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, like, Maybe that was that must have been when I was still in my like, oh, everybody fight is a so hot stage. Right. But I definitely, I definitely don't have that attitude anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, man, oh, missed you opportunity. Like dad? Yeah. Like, oh, you look like you're someone's dad. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's perplexing, I guess. But uh, <laughs> I had to ask about it because that was a. Uh, that was a good post. Um, so <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> I need. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep posting them. I've been like wanting to check them every day now because I like. I was an idiot. <laughs> oh, we all <laughs> were. Ago, I, I know. I get some, some of them. Are so fucking stupid. Yeah. 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 Like I probably maybe some of these I shouldn't. You know, I might get canceled. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's. I know. I definitely delete. I definitely delete some because a lot of them are like talking shit about people, and I'm like, right. yeah, I should probably get rid of this one and i i can't believe so when i because i was supposed i got picked to do the uh the first 125 pound tough show right okay tough house and um uh, before when they accepted me before we were supposed to go in the house they made me scrub all my social media they to take out you. everything wow. yeah to take out everything that had the word cunt in it because <laughs> they were like because they were like this is exactly what they said they were like we understand that cunt means something different in australia and you're australian 
they're like, but we're trying to appeal for the American public. So it doesn't have the same like feeling. Right. So I was like, okay. So I went through and like, thank, thank goodness. This is when I was still with Daniel Rubenstein and Danny actually went through all my social media and sent me links to like every post that had the word cunt in it so that You're I could like, just Danny, there's them. a thousand. This is going to take me yeah, forever. There were so, <laughs> so many. And then I didn't even do the top. Down. Right. And, I pulled out and I was like, Oh, I did all this work for nothing. <laughs> god damn it oh my god but yeah. now instagram so i still because i use it pretty frequently because it's not a it's not a negative i mean i can use i use it negatively sometimes but it's still like such a jokey word to me like like <clears throat> yeah i go like if someone writes something disgusting and i'll be like oh what the fuck is wrong with this cunt yeah. you know like it's still not as extreme as what it is in the u.s um but instagram because i've posted it a couple of times in the last couple of weeks instagram's now flagging me for violations even if i say it in like a funny manner even if i say it like oh what a mad cunt which means like yeah that dude's sick you right know? right uh yeah i'm getting flagged for it and then and I, they keep threatening to shut my instagram down so now i'm like you gotta let me fly man i'm a peacock <laughs> <laughs> you gotta let me fly <laughs> Wow, that is, yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Especially if you're not like directing it at anybody, you know. <laughs> no, they're like even so that I got flagged. So I put up, I put up a story like last year, which was a picture of like a a younger picture. I think I was like ten, and it had my two of my sisters and one of my brothers in it, right? And they were all younger than me, and it was like a family little family picture. And I and I wrote, I, I can't remember if I wrote. Oh, I think I wrote, haha, cute cunts, right? Yeah. That got flagged for bullying. And I'm like, it's a photo of myself. Like, what are you talking about? I said cute cunts, which is like, like these kids are I called are cute. them cute, yeah. Yeah, like it's not. So stupid. Fuck you, Instagram. So yeah, stupid. Not, not fuck you, Instagram. Please don't delete me. Right. <laughs> Maybe. I'm a big fan. Yeah. Edit that part out. See, I'm, now, yeah. I, now I'm censoring. God damn it. See, that's what, how they get you. That's how they get <laughs> <Right>? you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness what a wild world we live in but uh i think most people really? at least know what you mean but uh that's interesting though about the ultimate fighter i i don't recall us you saying that or anything hearing about it before was that you didn't do it or was it like the weight issue i mean obviously they didn't let you in in the first place but how that kind of um so i'd never fought at 125 pounds before right so before i got signed to the ufc i, I exclusively fought at 135 mm -hmm. and then my coach at the time in vegas convinced me that i was too little for 135 and that i needed to drop down so then i went and did tryouts for tough got in and then like three days before we were supposed to go into the house i pulled out because i was like i really don't think i can make 25 back to back like i've never made it before and i and i realized that like if I went in and I missed, my chances of being in the UFC were going to be significantly reduced, yeah. you know? So I decided to pull out and then, um, I, yeah, I, I, I said no to the show, didn't go. And then like a week later, signed um, to fight Vanessa Porto in Invicta, which was going to be my like first, first fight that at 125. That is a hell of a debut. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was pretty confident, but... Um, yeah, so that was going to be my first fight at 125. And then during that camp, I got the short notice call up to fight Beck Rawlings on UFC Sydney at 125. So, and then I missed weight for it because it was on 10 days notice and I had to fly from Vegas to Sydney. Um, I missed by like two pounds, I think. Like I tried, I really tried, but we also told them when they gave me the fight, we also said like, it's such short notice, like there's a chance. I was very, we were very honest about it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and then, yeah, I'm glad I don't fight at 125 anymore. And I'm really glad I didn't do the tough house because my story would be very different if I had. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's, uh, I mean, just looking at tough now, it's, it feels so pointless to me in this current yeah. day and age, you know, like not to knock it. I still like it. I don't, I didn't watch last season, but you know, it's like. I haven't, I've, I've never watched it. I've watched like a couple of episodes here and there that my friends were in, mm -hmm. but even like, even you know what you know what i don't like about so i got really excited when i saw that juliana and amanda were doing tough house right and i was like fuck yeah they're doing more bantam weights they're not even doing bantam weights right they're doing fly weights yep. so that makes no fucking sense like you have two of the best 135ers like do a fucking bantam weight house like where there's such a big division in the like there's such a uh a, a gap like kinda. there's 
yeah, like the 35s are either super good and have been around forever, like Raquel Pennington, Amanda, you know, like for even Aspen, even Holly. Like there's these girls that are at the top who have been doing it for a while. And then there's all these like girls who aren't as good and who are super new, you know, and there's like, there's this massive gap between the two. And I was like, yeah, this is a good opportunity to, to, to build, build the Bantamweight division, especially if they're trying to, not do 45 anymore so i'm like cool flyweight flyweight's killing it strawweight's killing it like let's fucking make the bantamweight division great again it was the first one <laughs> yeah not so fast <laughs> and they're uh, like oh just kidding yeah and then i guess the argument though against that is then well ideally the winner wants to face their coach at some point if you're like exactly right, yeah. like when they did uh when they did the the men's flyweight to fight dj Yes. Right. That like the 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 tournament of champions or whatever it was like. That was fucking perfect. That was the perfect plan, the perfect idea, you know. But yeah, I don't know why they don't do more like that. Like, it doesn't necessarily need to be need to be tournament of champions, mm -hmm. but like they have the contender series to give people new contracts. Like the Ultimate Fighter is supposed to is supposed to give them a real shot. Yeah. Yeah, and then I mean taking them away from taking you away from your your gym and isolating you for six weeks or however long. It's it's pretty. It's very outdated. I think that's terrible. <laughs> Amber 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 Lybrock just said the other day. She was like, "Man, I'd love to do the tough house." I was like, "Fucking why?" <laughs> I said, "You would hate being stuck in a house with like 10, 11 other women for six weeks. Like that would be your fucking nightmare." You know. <laughs> She's like, oh, oh I thought say, it'd be I, cool. It sounds cool. <laughs> no, it does not. I couldn't think of anything worse than yeah. having to share a room with people for six weeks. Yeah, and then I mean potential opponents. Like, a lot of stress involved. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about that. I'd, I'd fight my friends, but, like, it's just having room out. I don't even like, like, I love that Coach Kira, I always share the, we have, like, the the UFC rooms now, uh, like, little, um, like, little apartments, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we each have our own bedroom it's not just one room like a standard hotel room okay they're like little apartments with a kitchen and a living room and everything and i always share with coach kirian because one he's the last one to come in two he doesn't try to talk to me right so i'm like it doesn't necessarily feel like i'm i'm rooming with right. someone because i i very much enjoy living on my own so like to, for that to have to change in fight week is my fucking nightmare so i always put i put amber even though Amber's my best friend like i put amber and whoever my other cornerman is they they share a room because they always like to talk a lot. So I'm like, cool. I put the talky <laughs> ones together. They can talk to each other. And then that way they don't have to be like, they, they don't have to feel weird because I don't want to talk. Like, cause then, you know, when a talky person's around a non talky person and they feel like they can't talk a lot, yeah. it, it like, it makes each person uncomfortable, you know? So I'm like, cool. I'll room with Kirian. Cause Kirian, he just, he's still running his business and like handling all his other fighters. So he, does, he just leaves me alone until I need something, you know? And it's, it's perfect. And then my other two can go in my other two corners. They go and hang out, yeah. throw out and everything. Got it all mapped out. So Amber is with you then for this one too? Yeah, she, she's okay. driving out right now. I have Kiri and Amber and then Mike Malott from Alpha Male. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. And have you gotten to see Kanako yet? Or are you planning to? Because she, I think, is still in Vegas, I think. Yeah, dude. Okay, so I left the PI yesterday afternoon and I think... I saw her walking along the side of the road, but I could only see the back of I could only see the back of this person. Um, and they were in like a hoodie and long pants, but it looked like Kanako. Like it looked <laughs> like whoever this person was was walking how Kanako. She's pretty was. hard to miss, Jesse. <laughs> yeah, but it was like head to toe covered up. Okay. I couldn't see the face or anything, you know, like they, this person was walking away from me in a in a hoodie with the hood up and sweatpants on. But it was just like, I was I was looking at this person and I'm like, fuck, that might be Kanako. <laughs> um, especially because whoever it was was carrying a scooter. And so I, I thought about turning around to go see if they wanted a ride, but it was a, it was a one way street and they were walking in the opposite direction. Mm. Right. So then I was like, oh, I'm going to have to go all the way around and come back onto the freeway and then take the freeway exit to come back. And I was like, oh, that seems like a lot of effort. So I'm just going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> poor yeah, so poor Kanako, probably, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe Kanako. But um, I think she's training at Extreme Couture, I believe. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to go in and see Eric at some stage next week after I fight. So I'll probably, hopefully, I see her there. I love Kanako. Yeah. Yeah. She's been working with uh, Andrade and, um, Jessica Del Boni, 
kind of those. Oh, awesome. So, yeah. Um, hopefully it means she's got a fight coming up. I mean, last I heard, I not yet, but uh, she's here training. So that's a good sign, I think. But, I just want to see her win. I just want to see, as, after that last fight, like, it's gonna I just want to see It's going to be good scary for whoever's fighting her next. <laughs> so. I mean, she's, I can't even, who fought it? Was it Livia? Uh, who broke her up? Oh, that her was Jandaroba. Jan Jandaroba, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, she, like, Vienna is no joke. She was just an alpha male a few weeks ago, and um, oh, wow. I didn't get to, I didn't get to train with her, but Corey McKenna did, and Corey was like, "Man, she's so good!" Like she was raving about Jander Um and 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 I guess they were all trying to convince her to come back and like come train at alpha male, you know. But uh, yeah, like that that makes sense. Like Jander is fucking no joke, mm -hmm. you know. But anyone else that stands across from Kanako is in for a world of hurt because Kanako's. Yeah, so good. Yeah. So good. I just hope that she's, like, getting what she needs out here, you know? Like, I just – I want to see her do well so bad. Mm -hmm. Yep, same, same. But uh, I'm confident. I believe in her. So uh, whoever it is, yeah. sorry to that person, but we're Team Kanako yeah. over here. <laughs> but, uh... Always, no matter what, Team Kanako. Uh... And it's hilarious, Jesse. I love that uh, we haven't even got to talk about your fight yet. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're just catching up. I know. On this. <laughs> just just how just how it goes. Uh, just hanging yeah. out. But uh, yeah, Stephanie Agar fight, obviously, and um, should be a good one. Looking for the third win in a row. Were you surprised not to get a ranked opponent? Because I mean, you you are. I, I get you shouldn't say six rounds undefeated in these last ones because you finished Alpar. But I mean, I still like to say that because yeah. you didn't lose that round anyway. But uh, I mean, I think you have great momentum. And Ariel was saying like, keep gaining the momentum, add momentum back. But I think you got some. So I was kind of surprised to see nothing against Stephanie. But were you surprised to get her? No, I was stoked. Because I'd given, I just, I, uh, I just switched from Ruby to Iridium right mm -hmm. and i hadn't even given iridium my list of girls that i wanted to fight because i kind of like you know i'm like yeah i'm not i'm not getting paid that well yet you know and the girls who are in the ranking even though i know i can hang with all of them like they're no joke they take it they take like i always prepare for the best no matter what you know but like the the girls that are in the top 15 the top 10 like they're all fucking legitimate contenders and I'm like, when I fight them, like I want to be, I want to be making a little more money. Like that's that's just it. We all want to make more money, you yeah. know. So um, I wasn't like I don't really care about ranked opponents versus non-ranked opponents outside of the financial side of it, you know. So um, when Jason called, House called me and was like, "Hey, do you want to fight on this date?" Because I'd previously been told I wasn't going to get a fight till like April, you know, and I'd been asking for March and I was like, after my last fight, I was like, give me March. Like that gives me, you know, a month or two off to chill because I, every time I'm not in camp, like I have to travel a lot for sponsors and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, that gives me a month or two to do to get all my sponsorship obligations out of the way and then I can commit to camp, like let me fight in March. And then I kept getting told like, nah, push back, push back, probably not till April now. And then literally like I hadn't even signed my contract with Iridium yet house calls me and he's like, he's like, Hey, do you want to fight for every 19 against Stephanie? Edgar? I said, done. I didn't even talk to like, Oh no, no. I like, I was like, yeah, give me three minutes. And I went, spoke to Kirian and I was like, Hey, we just got off with this. It's eight weeks. Um, what do you think? He watched like, he watched a little bit of her last fight, which she won. I can't remember who her opponent, I can't, Shanna, Shanna something. Shanna Young, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Shannon Young, yeah, that's it. So he watched a bit of her fight with Shannon Young, and he was like, "Yeah, no problem. Like, let's do it." And I called, I called House back in about three minutes. It was like, "Done, take it." Um, so I feel like I think she was already booked, but they didn't have an opponent for her, okay. right? So it wasn't really like, "Oh, we want this person for Jesse." It was just convenient that she needed an opponent, mm -hmm. and she was on my list of girls that I wanted to fight. You know, like I, I had a list of four or five names, and she was one of them and it just felt like the stars aligned. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, quicker than when you wanted to with March. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, I actually wasn't really training. Like I just gotten back from a bit of travel. I mean, like I'd still been going and lifting and doing my conditioning and a bit of striking, but I wasn't doing full MMA training. Um, yeah. And I, I think I just gotten back from like the East coast or maybe Vegas somewhere. I just gotten back from like a two week 
trip. And yeah, the day I got back to California, I was in the gym. I was getting ready to go train, do my first session in a couple of weeks. And House was like, got a fight for you. I went and said, fuck it. Like, <laughs> let's, let's go. Do it. I'm good. I'm, yeah, I was still in good shape. Like I wasn't, you know, I, I kept up with the things that, that I needed to keep up with. And yeah, it was right. I like being in camp. And it's just, I was just so fucking happy to not be on the show for a year, you know? Yeah. So like he could offer me a fight on two weeks notice and I probably would have said yes. Cause I was just so stoked to not have to wait. I'm tired of waiting. I've had yeah. so much time off between the last three fights. Like I'm just, I'm tired of, of having to wait. So are you kind of of the same mentality now as, you know, cause I remember back to when you were fly waiting on the run that you had there and you were kind of saying, you know, I want to prove myself and work my way up to earn, you know, that title shot rather than, you know, maybe skipping the line and picking certain fights or whatever, which I'm sure you never want to do anyway. But is it kind of the same like that? We're like, I'll take out everyone I need to, to get to that, you know, mountaintop. I mean, I'll, I'll take out everyone. There you go. That's it. Like I'm <laughs> down. I'm so confident with, with my team and with my camps now between CSA, Alpha Male, my boxing coach at El Nino, um, grappling in Half Moon Bay, wrestling in Gilroy. Like I'm so, my, and my strength and conditioning in Sacramento, like I'm so confident in, in what, in what I have access to in order to prepare. And I'm confident in my abilities that like, even if this Saturday doesn't go the way I think it's going to go. Like, it's not going to be an issue. Like I know what's coming. I know I'm going to get to fight everyone. And I have, I have full confidence in that. And I have full confidence in my ability. You know, it's just, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to make enough money to give my dogs the life that they deserve. Like, that's it. <laughs> that's it. So, Smoking like a true really dog, mom. As long, as long as I'm getting my win bonuses, like I don't really care. I don't really care who I fight because you know, I I, uh, I spent a lot of time with my therapist learning to focus on the journey, not the outcome, and that's really that's really where I'm at these days. You know, I like I got rid of a lot of external negativity. I got a lot of I got rid of a lot of negativity in my personal life, in my relationships, and I just I feel like I'm finally in a space where I'm actually enjoying everything about my life. Like it used to just be, oh, I hated my personal life, but I would enjoy training. You know. Um, now it's like I'm, in, I'm finally in a space where I feel, I just feel good, you know, and I and I know it's showing because my my team and the people who are closest to me have have also noticed a real change since I since I kind of made since I kind of eliminated some uh, negativity in my personal life. You know? Well, I wanted to ask you about uh, you know the sobriety, which congratulations on continuing that going on and everything. But I know that what was it. I don't remember exactly when, but you had kind of that that test period of yeah, end of 2020 when yeah. I, I for like five weeks, I think it was. So I mean, that's like a pretty interesting <clears throat> experience to go through and realize, like, come to that acceptance of, all right, I guess it's just not for me, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, because you know, before that, I'd always wondered, like, I'd I'd want it because there there are definitely there are definitely things about drinking that I do miss sometimes you know like like my favorite thing used to be to when I when I lived with my best friend here in Vegas Stephanie when Stephanie and I lived together like my favorite thing was to crack a bottle of wine on a Sunday and do a big cook up like mm -hmm. that was just that was my that was my my day of rest and that was my day of peace and then and then we'd do a big cook up together and then we'd play video games you know and it was just such a it was just such a beautiful process that when I quit drinking, like it didn't feel the same, you know, it didn't feel the same because I, I often used alcohol to forget about everything else in my life. Like it wasn't just to, it wasn't just like, Oh, I enjoy drinking. It was, I need to forget about mm -hmm. some stuff, you know? And I, I would use it as a, I would use it as a numbing agent more than anything else. So, um, there are like certain things that I miss, like having a glass of wine with dinner when I'm at a nice steakhouse, stuff like that. And even like it took me a long time to figure out how to even be social without alcohol. And there are certain environments that I just don't put myself in anymore. Like I don't go to nightclubs, not because I'm worried I'm going to drink, but just because I don't enjoy it. Yeah. You know, like there are definitely environments that I enjoyed when I was drinking that I don't enjoy now that I'm sober. Um, and it was hard for a long time because I, when I went sober, I lost a lot of friends and realized like how many friends I, only, I had only because we would drink together, you know, but now... Now, like the people, like my my core group, like the people that I hold the closest, they 
I know that we can go and do anything. And one, they're not going to drink around me. And two, they're never going to want me to drink. You know, like they, they love the way I am as sober Jesse. And especially when I, when I had that relapse, um, like Kiri and Amber and Adam Piccolati all noticed a bit. None of them knew I was drinking. All of them knew that something was going on. Like they all saw it, you know, and it wasn't until I admitted that I'd started drinking again that, that they were like, oh, it makes sense. Cause they saw like an immediate shift in my energy, shift in my attitude. I was unhappy. Like I would, I would, I would wake up from dreams, like from suicidal dreams. Like I was crying every day. It was, it was awful, you know? But before that, I'd always wondered if I was going to get to the stage where I could, where I could moderate, where I could go back to having a glass of wine with dinner, you know, because that, that was something that I really enjoyed. And then I'm very grateful that I went through that five week period because it, it really taught me a lot about myself. It taught me a lot about my addiction. Like it made me realize like, no, I, I'm, I'm never going to be able to drink again. Like I'm never going to be able to drink in moderation and that's okay. Like I'm, I don't have those questions anymore. So I feel way better about my decision than what I did beforehand. Cause I'd always had those questions like, what if, what if, what if, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it also made me realize that like, like I started drinking because I felt like I was in a safe space and because my partner at the time drank a lot, you know? So it was like, it was becoming the norm where there would be alcohol around all the time. You know, we were always, every time we would hang like, every day he would want to go hang out in a sports bar and watch and watch sports and drink beer, you know? And so I was always in these environments that had alcohol. And so then I was like, okay, like maybe I'll be okay. Cause I always felt a little left out because him and all his buddies would be drinking and right. I'd be the only one sober and I'd be having a fucking miserable time. But I knew that if I didn't go, I, I didn't get to hang out with him. So it was kind of like I was stuck between a rock and a hard place, yeah. you know? Um, so then, then having that relapse, and then realizing that I can't drink and making the decision that I was done done also made me realize that I can't, I can't be um, romantically committed to someone who does have alcohol in their life like that, you know? And that's, that's, that's been um, a difficult realization, but also a very freeing realization and difficult in the fact that alcohol and drinking is so commonplace. You know, that it's very hard to find someone who either doesn't drink or who doesn't drink much or who is willing to not drink, you know? Yeah. Um, so that that's the difficult part of it. But honestly, I'm in such a good space right now that I'm okay with that. And I have, I have faith that someone will come into my life who does meet those standards and meet those expectations. Um, and if they don't, like, I have fucking awesome dogs and a good life. Like, it's not... It's not having having a partner isn't a requirement to right. be having a good life at all. It would just be like a nice little cherry on top. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm sure too. Is it kind of frustrating to see for the people who like follow? This is the weird thing, right? The people who follow you and like that story should be supporting, but I know that you've probably gotten some shit for being like, yeah, I've been sober for four years, but they'll be like. Oh yeah, what about <laughs> the, that part of time, right? No, the only the only people, the only person who goes, well, you can't really say it's been that long is fucking Hans. Oh, They'll really? be like, you're like, well, you can't really say it's that long because remember that five weeks? Because um, he was very. I think he understands now, like why and what happened, but he was very disappointed in me oh. when that happened because he was he was one of the people who was so integral to me going sober in the first place, you know. So. Um, he was almost like my sponsor. So then for him to see me relapse kind of made, I think made him feel like he'd, he'd failed in a certain way as well. So he does like to remind me of that five week period. So that's why like when I hit four years, cause it's July 15th is my four, is my four year anniversary. I'm going to wait an extra five weeks to go, oh, now I've been sober for four years. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, I guess that makes sense from his perspective. Um, yeah. He's just, he's just, he's just busting my chops. That's it. He yeah. doesn't mean it seriously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that wouldn't be very nice if he was. You know. No, no. He's just, he's just fucking with me. <laughs> but, he just uh, likes to make sure that I stay level headed all the time. That's it. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Congrats, though. I mean, that's a tough thing to do and uh, happy that you're in a good place <laughs> overall. And, but I know also that people have been giving you shit about uh, the the goldfish brain the MA fans who only think that you're a boring wrestler or whatever. <laughs> Bro, I fucking it's blown my mind since my last fight. 
like even this week every post that i've made there'll be one or two i just i just block people immediately so if any of you dickheads write something that i don't like i just block you because i don't give a fuck but um even this week like oh you're just gonna lay on someone for 15 minutes that was one fucking fight (laughs) One fight. This is fight number 23. That was one fight. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. It's so funny. Especially, too, when the fight right before that one was, like, you just in violence mode. Yeah. (laughs) And no one remembers that. I, like, I repost videos from it sometimes and people like, oh, what a pity you don't fight like that all the time. I literally have fought like that every time. (laughs) Oh, my God. It's, uh, yeah, that's, that's just the world that we're working with, unfortunately. Uh, MA fans are unique. People just, they just expect you to perform perfectly every single time, you know, like. Well, the funny thing is, like, that wasn't a bad performance by you, obviously, obviously. No, it it literally was a perfect (laughs) game plan. The only thing I could have done better is more ground and pound you know but that wasn't like i didn't the the lack of ground and pound wasn't for lack of me trying that was all credit to jocelyn edwards for being so fucking strong and explosive every time i would try to i would like take pressure off a little bit to do something she she was like a coiled spring she was like a snake right like ready to strike i literally could feel it i would release a little bit to either try to transition like improve position or to, or to strike, and I could feel her just waiting for it. Like, I could feel the fucking energy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I didn't want to get hit by her again. She hits hard as fuck. And, like, yeah, so it, it, wasn't, it wasn't for lack of me trying. It was, it was because she did such a good job of being so dangerous that I, I did not feel comfortable trying, you know, because I didn't want to stand, I didn't want to have to stand back up. Like, I knew I could take it down whenever I wanted, but I also didn't want to, I only got hit, like, four times and i had two black eyes for three weeks like <laughs> like wow i like, got lucky <laughs> yeah like i didn't want to get hit more <laughs> and i can take a punch yeah she just hits hard as fuck that's the funny thing too is i think people don't realize like those little details that you just mentioned you won't know about unless you're there doing it yeah. like so many fans yeah and like- just don't get that yeah and they're like oh she just laid on her like no bitch i fucking tried I tried. You know, if Jocelyn Edwards ever gets a good striking coach, like a good technical striking coach, she's going to be a fucking threat. Like that's, that's a fact, you know, that, that girl has, that, that bitch has so much power. It doesn't even make sense to me. Would you say that she's the hardest person you fought? I know you fought Blanco and uh, I know a lot of people say she hits incredibly hard, but. Would you yeah, say? to be fair. I okay. When I fought Arlene, when I fought Arlene back on Nitro, also a featherweight. <laughs> she, yeah, it was, I think it was her maybe her only fight where she came down to bantamweight. Um, but she's a lot bigger than me. Like if you see us standing side by side, like she's a lot bigger than me. I'm not that big. Oh yeah, I, I was um, at her fight with uh, when she fought Amber. Actually, I remember that one. That was the first event I covered. Yeah. So yeah, she is definitely yeah, she, a big girl. <laughs> yeah, she's a big girl. You know, and she's strong. And so. That was, I think, the first MMA fight that my mom and my sister came to. And I remember being at the back and literally like two weeks before our fight, she, our lead had just won two world boxing titles, like two or three weeks beforehand. And I remember being at the venue in the Gold Coast and, and, and knowing my mom and my sister were there and I was like, fuck, I'm about to get knocked out in front of my mom. Like I was terrified. That's the only time I've been like, legitimately scared of someone that I was going to fight was Ali Blanco. And I was like, I'm getting knocked out from my mom for sure. <laughs> like I was, I was fucking adamant that that was going to happen, which is why like I won with wrestling. That's why I wrestled her. Cause I was like, oh, I like, I was terrified of it, but I'm like, I'm not getting knocked out from my right. mom. Like, like I'm not letting that happen. So I actually think I only got hit once or twice by her, but I was so focused on getting my takedowns and and doing what I needed to do to win that I don't even remember. I don't I don't remember. I don't think she hit me that hard. Jocelyn is the first time that I've been in the moment and been like, "Fuck that bitch hits yeah. hard." Like, yeah, made, made a I don't conscious now, Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ar- Arlene has also had like fifteen more fights since her and I fight, and she's a lot bigger now than what she was then. Like, I would never fight Arlene again. <laughs> Arlene, stay at featherweight, please. Don't ever come back to bantamweight. Yeah, that's not a rematch that we need necessarily. No, no one needs that. <laughs> but that is a great no, win in hindsight, Jesse. I mean, you finished her too, and 
especially yeah. with all that fear. I mean, it's a good moment. Yeah, no, I was terrified. <laughs> I was so. Tr- oh, I say that to the day I die. That's the only person I've ever been scared of, and it was because I thought I was gonna get knocked out in front of my mom. Yeah, I, I remember talking to uh, Marlis Kunin about the hardest person, hardest puncher she's fought because you know she's fought Cyborg twice and she fought Blanco, yeah. and she said, uh, yeah, that she would. She like remembers going like out on her feet and then being like. Oh wow, that was from her hitting me. <laughs> like, so, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, anger fist for yeah. a reason, <laughs> which I love that nickname, by the way. <laughs> sure. I wish, yeah. I hope she gets to fight Cyborg again. I would love to see. I would love to see her get that win. Yeah. I really think if anyone can, it's her. You know, she uh, Cyborg. Cyborg just has Cyborg has like I think a level in- of intensity and aggression that it's very hard to replicate in training you know yeah. and i think it like like she clearly hits super hard you know but it's the fact that when cyborg goes she fucking goes and she she like not only goes with the intensity and aggression, but with like two and i don't even know how you how you prepare properly for that you know just yeah <laughs> I don't know if you can, which is why it's so hard. But, uh, yeah, I know. But I do, I do hope, I do hope, I think like one or two more fights and Ali will be, will be right back there, you know, because I think she's still the number one or two ranked featherweight in Bellator yeah. anyway. Yeah, now that Julia's gone, yeah. I think she is number one. So, and uh, Cyborg Oh, Julia said, went to PFL, didn't she? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah, Julia and Kayla Harrison. If Kayla stays, if Kayla stays, but yeah, that's that's the one <laughs> to make too if she does stay. So yeah. Um, and uh, as for other recent fights, I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, Whitaker versus Adesanya too, because I I know a little bit of a conflicting one for you, right? You like both guys, and uh, that was a very. Uh, I'm not honest. I, I like. I may have had a sex dream about Izzy one time, <laughs> but like, like I'm a I'm a diehard Whitaker fan through and through you know like he he and i've said this before about him and alex volkanovsky i could be dating someone and they fight them and i'm still gonna go for them it supplies to frankie too though right like yeah 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 but frank (laughs) like frankie frankie's frankie's story within within my journey is is over you know like he was a very big part of my journey when i first started fighting but now like it's it's obviously we've transitioned on to different things but Alex and Robert, I fucking love them. I love them as people. I love them as athletes. I love them as champions. Like I love them as ambassadors for the sport. I love them as representatives of my country. You know, um, I I thought Robert looked great. He uh, he looked very obviously hesitant, which I think is is bound to happen when you get knocked out by someone and then rematch him. You know, mm-hmm. no matter how well you've been doing since then, it was very understandable. I thought he looked better and better. Uh, well and he started to find his feet be comfortable you know um i really hope that if they fight again which they will like there's i have no doubt in my mind that that anyone robert fights after this is going to get fucked you know yeah um and then robert will be like one or two more wins away from fighting for the title again and i i think that only some tiny little adjustments and he can he can take that you know i also i also am very happy to have the middleweight title as as part of the anzac community you know like to be if it's not australian like to have it be new zealand is mm-hmm. that still brings me a lot of joy i'm just such a big robert whittaker fan that it i'm gonna be sad no matter who he fights if he loses yeah well it was so interesting to me like looking at the aftermath and seeing how people saw the fight because it's very i've seen a lot of people saying like robbery and that kind of thing which it's I don't know. And like Claire, people think it was very clear in one way over the other one. It was like, it seemed pretty competitive yeah. to me, but obviously more so than the first fight. But I don't know, a very odd one to score. Did you agree that Adesanya did win, though? I agree that uh, that Izzy won. Um, I do think it was very close. Uh, but like, I don't think it was close enough to be a robbery, you know? Like, if, 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 Izzy hadn't defended as many takedowns as what he did, you know, clearly, like if he hadn't been able to pop back up and escape, it, it would have been 
obviously I think Robert would have got it. I think that's the only thing that lo- that that lost Robert that fight was just not being able to take him down those few times. Yeah. Game of inches. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. When it came to the striking, they both they both did really like they both <clears throat> did fucking well. You know, like like if it was just a striking match, it could it could have been it could have been close to a draw. But the 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 takedowns and versus takedown defense, I think, is what is what actually separated the win. Yeah, yeah, but uh, good fight nonetheless. Just a very interesting one. I've never seen people kind of. I mean, I've seen that before, right? But they were very. <laughs> it was very Team Rob versus Team Izzy on this one. So uh... yeah, people love Rob though. That's the thing. Like, like the people who love Rob, he he he's just such a good person in a sport where there's like so much negativity and anger and aggression and people talking shit about each other like rob is just rob rob's a fucking athlete he's a husband he's a dad like 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 rob's a blue collar worker you know like he's just he's an everyman and that's why people love him and then izzy izzy represents izzy represents like not just new zealand but nigeria like izzy represents an entire an entire people like he represents a tiny little country in new zealand he he represents like this entire this this nigerian african legacy you know like i mean both of them have such strong stories and such strong convictions behind them that it's it was always going to be like very very red versus blue you know Yeah. yeah definitely a lot of passion involved from each side and uh that's what you love to see, though, right? That's what makes the sport so, yeah. <laughs> so special. Yeah, and it's nice to see. It's nice to see it happen when the fighters aren't just talking shit about each other. You know, refreshing because like it has a trickle down effect. As soon as once the fighters start talking shit, then all the fans start talking shit, and then it just becomes this like horrible negative thing. You know? Yeah. That's why, like, I even on even on my page, and I've been very vocal about this. Like, if anyone gets on my page and talks shit about whoever I'm about to fight or whoever I did fight, they get blocked and deleted. Like, that's it because I don't want that. Like, you either support me because you like what I do, you don't support me because you hate the other people. Like, that's not that's not the environment that I'm trying to foster. You know, yeah. like we're just here for for love of the sport. You know, like not there's no animosity. Right. And especially you don't want it to be fabricated either, you know, like making shit up, which we do see plenty yeah. of, but it's like, if you can avoid that, oh. maybe best to do. <laughs> so. Yeah. I feel like some people just are just a cunt for the sake of being a cunt. Like, Oh, for sure. No, there's no point. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so. Okay, Jesse. Well, I've kept you for quite a while, which I appreciate greatly. Just, uh, Two more things I want to you know ask you before I let you get out of here, but uh, if you don't mind me asking, the management change was was interesting, you know, because you've been with Rube for a, a good while, and if you don't want to say it's all right, but yeah, I was curious. I have a Ruby tattoo. Oh, there you go. Also, Danny Fages, you know, Danny's the one who brought me to the U.S. and Danny's gone above and beyond for me always. You know, uh, the decision to change management had nothing to do with him. Uh, or like anything that he'd failed at or anything that he hadn't done well, it had everything to do with me wanting to work with Jacob Parker. That was it. So Jacob Parker is the, is the like marketing and sponsorship guy for Iridium, you know? And uh, he and I, he and I first started working together when I was running Triumph United and I would sponsor some of his guys. And then we just became such good friends. And I saw the work he was doing for his athletes and he, he would try to help me out as much as he could, you know, and he never, he never once said to me, like, I can't help you if we're not, if you're not with us, you know, like he didn't, he didn't poach me. He never indicated anything like that. Mm-hmm. I, after, I think about a year and a half of working with him through the Triumph stuff, I was like, man, like, I, I really like what he does. Like, this is, this is what I want to do, you know? And I said that to Danny when I left, I was like, it's not, it's not about you. It's not about me wanting to you it's about me wanting to work with Jacob and I know that I can't work with him to the full extent if I'm not with them you know like like Danny was so amazing and so integral in me getting to where I'm at you know it was just it was purely I just I wanted to work with Jacob I didn't even know Jason House like I'd never even met him you know like I'd had no interactions with him so it wasn't yeah it wasn't even a fight management thing it was it was I wanted to work with Jacob so that was what it was and I, I still like you know Still friends I'm, with Danny. Danny and I were, 
I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not sure. Like we were friends, but we don't really talk anymore. Like I messaged him for his birthday and was like, Hey, I miss you. And I didn't really get like an, an engaging response. And that's fine. Like, mm-hmm. like I know, like I was, it felt like a breakup. Like I was hurt leaving him and I can't imagine how hurt he was because it, it was out of his control, you know? Mm-hmm. So I feel terrible about that. Um, just because I never want to upset any of my friends and people that I love, you know, but it definitely, it definitely was like Jacob's gone above and beyond for me since I've been with them. And I don't like, I, I really feel like Jacob and I, even once I leave and mate, are going to, are going to be able to do really great things together. So that's kind of, that's, that's what I'm excited about. And I am, I am, I stand by my decision for that reason. Yeah. I mean, gotta do what's best for you and what you want to do, right. Follow the, uh, the, I don't know what the dreams or whatever it may be, yeah. uh, but you mentioned Triumph United, which uh, I know you've been doing the what the trifecta seminar type yeah. things. I don't know if you did similar things with Triumph, uh, but that looks like you have fun with it. I've seen like the bloopers and all of that, but what is what has that yeah. been like <laughs> with trifecta? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's a, we have a fitness app. We have a fitness app that you can work out on the phone uh, in your own home. All that shit. I, uh, I, I have a bunch of kickboxing and boxing classes on the app. So that's kind of what it is. Like come and train with me in your own home. Is it, it's not um, live though, right? No, no, okay. no, no. We were doing, we were doing live classes through COVID because it was very hard for me to, to keep up in my schedule. Plus the, the company is um, based in New York. So that a lot of the people that were on board with the live classes were on East Coast time. So it was very hard to, to get them to adjust to Pacific time and, and fit it into my schedule. So now I just do the the app, the virtual app okay. classes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's cool. I mean, it's a, it's a good company. We've been, we, we released a couple months ago and be doing really well. So yeah. Nice. It, it's, is it weird? Like doing that for nobody actually like in front of you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's weird. So we've we've done three we've done three filming sessions because we do it every quarter. Um, we've done three filming sessions. The first one was awkward as fuck. Like even when I watched my classes from that first run compared to the third, like night and day difference. First one because when you have no one in front of you other right. than like the cameraman, it's hard <laughs> to it's hard to be engaging and to have this energy. And we were also doing like 14 hour filming days, you know? So it's, it's, it's like, even though the classes were scripted, like we write all our own classes, you'd have to, you'd have to improv the in between bits, improv the personality, like put, put these little bits of your, your energy and your attitude in there. And that's definitely hard when you're tired and there's, there's no one speaking. I teach, cause I teach classes at CSA and when I teach like, I'm very engaged with the people I teach. Like I talk shit, I make jokes, like I like I, I give one on one help, you know. That's that's definitely my style of teaching. So it it was for sure a huge adjustment. Um but kind of by the by the most recent filming session, like we all we had a top down, we had like our, our intros and outro and like our own little tagline and yeah, we would we kinda were figuring it out. Yeah, I know it's I Feeding off that energy is a, a real thing, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to not yeah. have that. Especially when we get there at like 5 a.m. And we were, we'd were we only left at like 11 p.m. the night before. And then we had to keep, go back in at 5 a.m. And then trying to wake up. And it was cold and fucking dark. And yeah, it was just, <laughs> it was, it was interesting. It's been a learning experience for sure. Absolutely. Just uh, the more reps though, practice makes perfect. So for sure for sure (laughs) but all right jesse i will uh let you get on with things but first since i love you know hearing your perspectives on things i gotta know did you end up seeing uh the relationship story i did that you helped me with thank you again for that no Uh, all right well tell me about it (laughs) i was just curious uh well i mean uh it's best if you see it (laughs) where is it um it is on Miami news i did that before i left because i'm no longer with them but uh yeah send me the link send me the link all right i will so yeah. okay i didn't expect you to but uh, <laughs> i was curious yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> all good all good but uh yes thank you again for helping me with that because uh you know it's an interesting one to do but all right 
All right. I will let you get on with things, Jesse. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, excited to watch the fight, as always. Uh, you'll do your best out okay, there. Yes. Man. Go Thank get you. it. Go get it. All right. <laughs> cool beats. I'll talk to you soon.